Today we're going to continue our conversation on the analysis of one quantitative variable. We've been discussing the normal distribution. In the last few videos, we looked at the empirical rule, which is really nice to give you a snapshot of the population, but it's limited to just one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. So today we're going to talk about situations where you're not exactly one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. And um, the way that you calculate that distance from the mean is something through something called the z-score. So it tells you both the distance and direction in terms of standard deviations from the mean. So a z-score is going to be calculated by taking some observed value and subtracting the mean from it. So remember our mean is denoted with mu, that's the population value divided by standard deviation. So standard deviation for us in the population is sigma. So if I were to rewrite this observed value, sometimes is just referred to with a capital X minus the mean for the population, and then um, you'll measure that in distance or units of standard deviation. So what you'll notice is the numerator is measuring how far away from the population mean you are. It also will give you direction, and then you will divide by sigma to put it into units of standard deviation. So today, I'm still looking at the population of college females and their um, height. So we have a mean of 65, and then a standard deviation for the population of 2.7. So I wanna measure a z-score for my height because I'm not sure how I compare to the rest of the population because my height isn't exactly one, two, or three standard deviations away. So I'm gonna calculate a z-score for my height. So let's say that I, for all intents and purposes, are in, in the college age female group. So my z-score then, I have a height of 67 inches, so I would be the observed value, so we would have 67 minus mu, which is 65, so that's going to give me the distance from the mean and the direction, and then I want to put myself into units of standard deviation, so dividing by that 2.7. So my z-score is 0.74, which means that I am 0.74 standard deviations above the mean. So a z-score allows you the opportunity to be precise in terms of how far from the mean you are in units of standard deviation. So I say above the mean because my z-score is positive. If I were to standardize the value of the mean, I would be at zero. So 65 minus 65 would give me a z-score of zero. So zero will be the center of that standardized curve. And then any value that's positive is going to be above the mean or to the right and any value that's negative will be below the mean.